Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of Lolita Tips for New Lolitas. This is going to be a continuation of our previous video in which we talked about OPs and JSKs. We talked about the pros and cons of each if you are a newer Lolita and trying to figure out which one you are more drawn to and if you need more information specifically about those two main pieces, I highly recommend checking out that video. Today we are going to move on to the two final types of main pieces for Lolitas and those are saddle pets and skirts. Saddle pets and skirts are very well known to us longtime Lolitas, but if you're a newer Lolita, you may not be too familiar with saddle pets and skirts, simply because they are by far the least popular types of main pieces. However, I do want to make it very clear up front that they are entirely valid for a wardrobe, meaning that if you are a Lolita and you find saddle pets appealing, your entire Lolita wardrobe can be saddle pets. And same if you prefer skirts, your entire wardrobe can be skirts. That is absolutely fine. So I wanted to talk a little bit about them for that reason though, and with that, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So as I just mentioned, these are by far the least popular types of main pieces. You are almost always going to be seeing Lolitas wearing either OPs or JSKs, primarily speaking. And there are several reasons for that that may not be very well known, so I wanted to cover some of those first off. And I also wanted to talk about a few important details to consider when getting into these types of main pieces and thinking about considering purchasing them for your wardrobe. First of all, these two are by far the most casual type of main pieces. There are certainly extremely extravagant types of both OPs and JSKs, but when it comes to telepits and skirts, they're kind of meant to be a little bit more casual. They are the least dressy of the main prints, and there isn't too much print to show off, simply because they are much smaller. When it comes to JSKs and OPs, there is a whole lot of dress to wear, not just the skirt portion itself with the print, but also the bodice. You can look at the straps. There are so many other details that are featured on the dress. And while these can be seen in style of pets, of course, because they are very similar to JSKs, they're not really seen as much in skirts as much. So do keep that in mind. If you really want something super dressy, you're going to want to go for a JSK or an OP. However, there are some great things about cello pets and skirts. For one, they are extremely easy to wear when you're traveling or when you're going to be wanting to move around a lot. Let's face it, JSKs and OPs are very hefty dresses. Even if they are very lightweight, they still just take up so much more space. And if you're going to be traveling like on public transit or walking around a lot and you want to be a little bit more comfortable, I highly recommend cello pets and skirts. Now be aware, these two still require a petticoat. You don't want to be wearing a huge massive petticoat, but they do make petticoats that are small enough to hold a skirt or a celepet. Now you can't really wear them with hoop skirts though. Hoop skirts are generally a lot larger. Now if you can find yourself a smaller hoop skirt that is meant to fit a skirt or a celepet, then that's perfectly fine. But a lot of hoop skirts tend to be on the larger side, and because of that, they're kind of impossible to wear with a skirt or a celepet. It'll definitely poke out at the bottom, and I highly recommend a petticoat specific to the sizing of whatever you're getting, either a salopette or a skirt. Typically, a small length petticoat can fit under both salopettes and skirts just fine, so you don't need two petticoats for each. If you have one that's short enough for your salopettes, it'll probably be fine for your skirts as well. So with those basic details out of the way, let's talk about some features of each, starting with salopettes. One of the most prominent features about cello pets is that they almost always come with adjustable straps, meaning that you can tailor them to suit your measurements more properly and make them a lot more comfortable to wear, adjusting them if you need them to be a little bit longer in terms of the straps or a little bit shorter. Speaking of shorter, cello pets tend to be shorter length, much shorter length than JSKs of the exact same print. If you put a cello pet and a skirt side by side of the exact same print from any specific brand, you'll notice that the length of the cello pet is going to be a whole lot shorter. Also, another notable feature is that the armholes for them are a lot wider and longer. So it's a lot easier, like I said, to move around your arms and things like that. And they're just a whole lot more casual because they tend to resemble jumpers a little bit more than straight up JSKs. But because of the shorter length, they are great for shorties. So if you are short like me and JSKs can look a lot longer on you than they can on taller Lolitas, then I really think Celepets are a great alternative. A lot of cello pets also come with really cute details like pouches, charms, and things like that. I have the Daydream Carnival cello pet and it comes with this adorable little pochette right here on the side and it's super cute. You can't really put anything inside of it or anything like that but it is a very cute decoration and it just enhances the cute look. I also wanted to point out that some brands actually specialize in cello pets. 
One of my favorite Taobao brands, V Castle, seems to release a ton of their dresses in style of pet cuts. They do release JSKs as well from what I've seen, and also OPs every so often, but they release almost every one of their new releases in a style of pet, and I love that about them. They are the brand to go to if you're a fan of style of pets, and I can't recommend them enough. So now let's talk about some features of skirts. Now, skirts might be a lot more versatile than you may initially think. A lot of my favorite types of skirts in the Lita actually have suspenders on them. Now, again, not every skirt has this, but there are so many different types of skirts in Lolita other than just the basic skirt that only covers your legs and down. Like I said, some of them have suspenders, and there are also apron skirts that cover the front of your body as well in sort of a makeshift bodice, but it won't cover the back of you very much. So that's another type of alternative to skirts if you're a fan of those. Apron skirts don't seem to be very popular from what I've seen, but I do see them around every so often, and if you can make a nice cord with them, then I can't see any reason why you shouldn't try them out. Now, because skirts tend to be the shortest, whether they have suspenders or not, they are usually not as detailed. Of course, there are some exceptions to this. For example, some skirts are known to have a tiered effect. For example, my Sweetie Chandelier skirt, even though it does not have any suspenders or anything like that, it is tiered, so that does add some additional charm to it that otherwise not be something that would be expected from a skirt. I have noticed that skirts seem to be a little bit rare amongst Taobao brands. I'm not saying that they're impossible to find, but from a lot of the brands that I buy from, they don't tend to sell skirts very often. There are some here and there that carry them, but if you're a fan of skirts, you're probably going to be reaching more into the brand area more than Taobao. So now we're going to move on to just a couple of pros and cons to both style pets and skirts. Again, this is not really a battle between them, like pitting them against each other in the way we did for the OPs and JSKs, but it's sort of just explaining to you the good things and the bad things about each of them, since they are, again, not very commonly seen, and you may not know unless you have had one firsthand how they can be used in Lolita. So one of the great things about style pets is that they still feel very Lolita. Like I said, there is a certain look and aesthetic to Lolita that you expect someone to be, you know, um, wearing when you're looking at them and they say that they're wearing Lolita. You're sort of expecting to see a certain type of look to them. And solo pets, I think, still carry that look. Because when it comes to Lolita, you're generally expected to be wearing more as opposed to less. So whereas a skirt may really, really feel like um, borderline, not Lolita at all, if you're not used to seeing Lolita coordinated with a skirt, a solid pet still definitely retains that feel. So if you're new to the fashion and you really want to give off that Lolita look, I really think solid pets are perfect for maintaining that aesthetic. I also personally think that solid pets are extremely fun to cord. There's a whole lot less pressure to look dressy when it comes to solid pets, so you can make for like some awesome casual cords that are just really toned down versions of something that you could wear a little bit more dressy if you were wearing something like a JSK and an OP. For example, I think pets are the perfect time to bust out all of your cute headwear, huge head bows, you can wear a lot more bracelets and things like that because you can wear, sometimes you can wear more casual like times of blouses, shorter sleeve ones, some people even wear regular t-shirts with pets, and so you can really accessorize a whole lot with what's on your hands because you might be wearing a shorter shirt or something like that. And it's just a whole lot of fun to me. A lot of people say salad pets are difficult to cord for this very reason, and I do understand that argument. I am going to make an entire video about casual Lolita in the future, because it is difficult to sort of walk the tightrope between casual Lolita and not really Lolita at all, and just sort of like cutesy general kawaii attire. But there is still a way to go about it when it comes to dressing up properly and um, wearing salad pets and skirts specifically. But otherwise, to get back onto the point, it's just a means of wearing Lolita in a way that can be a little bit more fun. Like I said, you really want to be wearing salad pets and skirts when you're moving around a lot, maybe traveling with some friends, going out throughout the day, having a fun day out having a picnic, or going to a museum, where you don't really want to be taking up a lot of space with a huge petticoat, and you also want to be able to move around quickly. I also think they can really emphasize the cuteness factor, and for that reason, they're usually better for sweet Lolita. I think that you can pass some salad pets for more classic looks, but I don't really think style pets suit gothic well, and I often don't really see that many gothic um, type of style pets. I see a lot of style pets that are sweet. I see some here and there that are a little bit more on the classic side, some for more uh, niche substyles like punk and things like that. But I really don't see style pets used in gothic very much, so do keep that in mind that if you're a fan of gothic and you want something a little bit more toned down, you're probably going to want to go for a skirt. Speaking of, let's talk about skirts a little bit more. So one of the good things about skirts that is, I guess I would say it's a good thing, but it may be a bad thing depending on how you feel about this, but skirts are great for showing off your blouses. 
Now, typically, the reason that most people get blouses is, you know, just to cover the arms, and you're not really worrying about what the blouse itself actually looks like because you don't really see it. And so for that reason, a lot of people may have a lot of blouses that aren't all that appealing when you are seeing like what they actually look like instead of being hidden under the JSK. But if you're someone who likes to wear really nice blouses, like really fancy, elegant, extravagant blouses, then why not pick up a skirt to really show off that material? On that note, another thing that you can wear with skirts, katsos! So katsos are really, really fun. They're basically like little t-shirts, but like made for Lolita, Fairy Kay, those types of things. Like they're still looking kind of dressy. They have those um, Lolita details to them the fashion is known for. And you know, they're just very cute. The the front of them, they have all these like little cute prints. For example, the Angelic Pretty Cutsos. I'll put a few on the screen for you guys to sort of see what they look like. And these are perfect to be worn with skirts. I actually think that if you are a fan of cutsos like this, you want to be having a whole lot of skirts. Not necessarily even the matching skirt, but just skirts in general. Because a JSK or a solid pet is going to cover up that gorgeous, gorgeous print that you have on it. So if you're a fan of really nice blouses and really cute cutsos, then I really think that you're going to be a fan of skirts. And like I said, I'm really excited to make the video talking about casual Lolita just for that reason. Because I feel like a lot of people just overlook how much fun you can cord um, wearing skirts or solid pets and cutsos and cute things like that. So because of everything that I just said, skirts can feel a little bit more fairy cake. It's not uncommon for people to show off coordinates with skirts in Lolita, like the subreddit or maybe on Twitter or Instagram, and to kind of be told, mm, it kind of looks a little bit fairy cake, kind of looks a little bit kawaii fashion, not really, it's not really giving Lolita, you know what I mean? It's not really giving, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It is just something that you have to be aware of that you really want to make sure when it comes to skirts, you really want to push everything pointing to the fact that it's Lolita. You want to be having your head bow on or any type of headwear, some jewelry, um, maybe wrist cuffs. Uh, like I said, you want to be having a nice blouse on, you want to have on your OTK shoes, purse, everything that still screams that you have everything in the Lolita lineup down pat. Because if you don't, it can be misread for Fairy K. And like I said, that's not a bad thing, but if you're going for a Lolita, you really want that Lolita to read. So if you are a fan of both, then that's a good thing as well, because then you can just do a Fairy K look if you would like. And that's also true for Stella Pets. But depending on if you like that or you don't like that, just make sure that you are very much uh, firm and on point with having all of the pieces required for a little coordinate when wearing skirts. So all of that really just summed up the next point, which is that skirts can be tricky to cord. Like in general, if you're trying to go for a classic look, and classic is really, really about like a certain type of appeal as well. Not just sweet, like classic as well, gothic, because you can't really wear a skirt for any substyle as long as you're coordinating it properly. But emphasis on that coordinating it properly, because you know, it's really easy to just wear a skirt and to just come across as just you're a normie and you're not really in the fashion or you're not really trying to be in the fashion that day. Maybe you're just trying to go a little bit like super duper casual, super, like super low key. Like honestly, just like Lolita adjacent at that point, like not even like full on hardcore Lolita, just like adjacent and inspired, which is perfectly fine. But again, like I said, just make sure that you're recording it properly. There's plenty of like gothic types of skirts um, by the big brands. Uh, and Pretty has some, like their Milky Cross, they have a Milky Cross skirt. So you can pull off a gothic look with that if you would like. Just have on some nice shoes and keep the darker colors if you have, well, I mean, if you have the darker color of the skirt. Obviously, if you have like the pink colorway, then that's not gonna apply. But I'm just trying to think of like the navy, the black. If you really wanna go for a gothic look and wearing a skirt, you really wanna make sure that your blouse is selling gothic. You wanna make sure that your OTKs and shoes are selling gothic, the purse. Because like I said, it's really easy to be mistaken as not wearing Lolita at all. And that is why skirts and cellophane pets can just be a little bit tricky and why most newer Lolitas tend to shy away from them just because they want to um, really understand the basics of how to go with a standard Lolita coordinate before going into the more casual side of things. But on that note, that's really all I have to say about solid pets and skirts. They are, like I said, not necessarily straightforward, but they are easy to understand once you really kind of get it into your head, the differences between how you cord them compared to how you cord a JSK or an OP. A JSK or an OP really does a lot of the work for you, and you don't really have to sell the fact that it's Lolita. But when it comes to salad pets and skirts, it can kind of be confused for other substyles, other types of J fashion in general, or not even J fashion at all, just like you're wearing a cute normie outfit. Which again, is fine if that's what you want, but it can be difficult if you're trying to get Lolita and you're just not there yet because you're a newer Lolita and don't have what it takes in your wardrobe to properly style it. Which is why the next video that's going to be coming from me is going to be all about casual Lolita. Whether it's dealing with salad pets and skirts, whether trying to 
style casually when it comes to an OP or a JSK. And really trying to like differentiate the difference between straight up casual Alita and cores that are just like not really there yet. We've talked about this a little bit before, but I really want to talk about it as it relates to casual because a lot of people can make that mistake and say that their court is casual when it's really just unfinished. And we want to address that to make sure that you don't run into those issues. So with that, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.